think people respond to ACEs differently and have a different set of physical outcomes than black people? Hmm. That's a very powerful question. See, that's what I was trying to think about. That's why I couldn't talk during the, the break because I was really like, I got to ask this question. Yeah. I've got to ask yeah. this question. Okay, I'm going to respond. This is a Cindyism. Um, uh -huh. What has been revealed to me since going down this rabbit hole is color will play a part in it, mm -hmm. but at, in essence, we're really at war with poverty because this is a okay. this is an educational misunderstanding. Okay, like we got presidents in office right now with a whole bunch of aces, and they don't look like us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They lead. You can tell. Not not when I we've had presidents in office, people in political mm -hmm. powers that are other skin colors. That if you know about aces, it would make the sense. It would make sense to you why they've made certain decisions because oh, yes. those certain decisions are being made based on you know things that happen in their childhood. So, um, so yes and no. I, I really feel like number That's one, this is a this is a fight with poverty. Okay. Right, because I got a lot of Caucasian friends. I've got mm -hmm. a lot of people who are non-brown people, mm -hmm. and they lack social skills just like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. like we both like working on our emotional intelligence. So. I think poverty is probably the first layer. And then, of course, if you happen to be a person of color, racism happens to be one of the additional questions mm -hmm. that they add into the 15, okay. um, the extended version of the test. So basically, uh, beyond just discrimination, right? Because like in the first 10, they didn't ask nothing about discrimination because mm -hmm. it was mostly Caucasian mm -hmm. people, right? Mm -hmm. So Philadelphia was like, well, what about our young men and women who mm -hmm. are being targeted in the streets? Like yes. that is traumatizing for mm -hmm. We've had situations in Orlando happen for children to be arrested and put in handcuffs under the age of 10. Yes. <laughs> Traumatizing. Yes. So, right? so you've been here long enough to, to know that, that story, uh, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then I'll add, Monica, what inspired me to figure out, you know, beyond just these 10 questions, there was a situation in my childhood, you know, activation warning. I want to tell people that I was 15 years old, July 5th, 1993. The very next day, I would turn 16. Mm -hmm. But instead of celebrating my 16th birthday, we were planning my 20-year-old brother's funeral. Oh. That question was not a part of the original 10-question survey. Mm -hmm. So Philadelphia knows that our kids are seeing violence. They're, they're, they, they are Death. watching their own mm -hmm. friends be killed. And so yes. I'm like, there was a moment where I will never forget what I was doing when I found out that my brother had been shot the day before my 15th, 16th mm -hmm. birthday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, there was no therapy. Mm -hmm. We were expected to get back to normal as soon as the funeral procession stuff was over, right? Right away. So right away, yeah. right? Like, get back to it. It'll be all right. Death had become a part of who we were, and sure. we were expecting that to happen to a lot of our young men. And this is in the 90s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, that inspired me to figure out it's got to be something more than that. And that's how mm -hmm. I fell across the Philadelphia study. I'm like, this is more representative of what I saw in my zip code mm -hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm.